Middle Ground is a social experiment that brings humans with opposing beliefs together. These discussions may contain viewpoints that are the result of misinformation. Remember to seek out experts and to be critical of your own biases while forming an opinion. Please see the humanity in each participant. And as always, we encourage empathy. I'm a black woman and I'm a dominant black woman. So I must be gay. I must be a lesbian. <laughs> what is yeah. that though? Like what, why does everyone always say like, oh, you look like a lesbian. What is that? What does a lesbian look like? Step forward if you agree with the prompt. It's normal for straight women to feel some attraction towards women. <laughs> yeah, I think that is completely normal. Women are attractive. We are cute, we are hot, we're fiery, and yes, we're attracted to each other. I've actually been on maybe like two dates with women because women are attractive and they're beautiful people. My feeling has always been that um, it's because I've had past, a past relationship with a man that was significant, folks have said, well, you should identify as bisexual, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, interesting, you know, because ultimately to me, calling yourself a label is, is not so much a labeling as it is an identifying, and it's like you're, you end up choosing. Yeah. Um, and so you can stop where you want, right? Like, I think there's the journey, and then for me, it was like, no, I stopped at lesbian and I'm staying here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the word that I'm okay. using. <laughs> I do have a follow-up question. Have you thought about women while masturbating? Yes. Again, women are sexy. Even for me, and I'm a straight woman, I don't always like straight, can I say the P word on here? Porn. I don't necessarily <laughs> like straight porn. Don't they say like, like statistically it, that women in general, straight or not, watch gay porn because yeah. you're looking at the woman being having we love pleasure that. and that's it, it's that that pleasure sensation that we're looking for that I don't always get when I'm watching men and women. That actually makes sense because I was a late bloomer and I found out what porn was when I was 17. When I saw it I was like oh sex is for the man because that's kind of right. how it looked it's for the man it's for the man to feel good i it never like clicked to me like oh you're supposed to also feel something so i understand what you yeah. say when you mean that wow yeah wow. yeah yeah <laughs> 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 you Hallelujah. hi my name's sarah and i'm a straight woman physically i've had attraction towards women i had a crush on a girl but that was it really, just a crush. Other than that, I haven't really thought about getting intimate with women sexually or romantically. Girly girl and tomboy are problematic terms. Personally, elementary school I was the only girl at boys' birthday parties, every time because a lot of my friends were boys, and I was just told, oh, Claire's just a tomboy. I mean, I was a dress-wearing girl. I was, had bike ramps in my front yard. I wanted to do all that stuff, and so like, she's a tomboy. Um, and that kind of fuzzied my queerness for me. And growing up, I was very hyper femme. I got Easter dresses and wore them year-round, those big, like, tulle Easter dresses. I did and that too. The best. But I was then looked at as a girly girl. So it's like, she can't be gay if she looks this way. Well, I think it's hard when you tell someone what they what are. What they are, yeah. I, so that's the only thing that I'm like, that could be problematic, because like you said, it fuzzied it for you. And that's why I think it could be problematic, because you can't put someone in a certain place. They have to do it themselves. I think if you're self-labeling, it's fine. But like yeah. putting someone else Agreed. into it, not great. Hi, my name is Claire. I'm 23 years old, and I am team lesbian. Compulsive heteronormativity is definitely um, a problem. It's when you grow up being assumed as straight. That definitely happened for me. I grew up with only straight role models, watching only straight people on TV. All I saw was straight culture. And I had those feelings start to develop that I thought were wrong and I was repressing and pushing them down. So I definitely think compulsive heteronormativity is a problem in society and we need to have a lot more queer role models in all our communities. 
So I think there's a split here to be made between being womanly and being feminine, right? Like I feel womanly, but I'm masculine in terms of my presentation. And I, I also am I'm gonna say this, being feminine has emotional qualities and being masculine has emotional qualities. Yeah, the expectation is I must be submissive. I must yes. be the mm -hmm. one because I am female by default. I'm the submissive one. I am very dominant. I'm dominant in the way that I present myself and when I'm in a room. And so men, especially, will, they are, they're the ones who will suggest. I'm a black woman and I'm a dominant black woman. So I must be gay. I must be a lesbian. I must be a lesbian. <laughs> what is that though? Like what, why does everyone always say like, oh, you look like a lesbian. What is that? What does a lesbian look like? There is no look. It's just what you are and who you are. I mean, my mom, when obviously when I came out, my mom was like, okay, well, you're a lesbian, so why do you date women that like to dress like men? Okay, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what they want to wear. That's what they want to wear? Okay, great. So I was going to ask you guys a question. Like, do you feel girly girl or tom tom, tom boy? I present like in a more feminine way, but I feel like internally, I don't know if I'm masculine but I feel like I embody a lot of like male traits where I'm like I think with logic and I'm like strong and don't really like say how I feel but like externally I'm feminine but also it does like pose difficulty when I'm out like wanting to look at girls a lot of time like I'm making eye contact and they're like why is this girl looking at me the way the patriarchy functions is that it's like divide and divide women and conquer women divide and conquer mm -hmm. right we're supposed to fight with each other we're supposed to compete over Ooh, men specifically yeah. like yeah I don't you know. sometimes I feel like I always want to believe the best in women but I feel like we've all had that thing where we're like why is that girl staring at me did she not like me like is she yeah, not like, like, right, like what's going right. on so, so, maybe so, she fights. yeah maybe she just likes me maybe she thinks I'm cute and I'll think that next time maybe I'm like mm. Hi, I'm Dia and I'm straight. Whenever I saw Waka Flocka Flame for the first time, I knew that that was my lane. I did go through a phase where I was trying to see if I was interested in girls, but then it usually always led back to men. I have been confused by my sexual orientation. I think like there was a time in my life where I was like, oh, boys are great. And then I got hurt, mm. like a real hurt, where I was just like, man, ugh, need a break. And so then I was kind of like, well, where do I go next? And so, you know, I went on my dates, as I, as I told you. And um, I just haven't found a woman that, you know, makes me go, <laughs> you know? I mean, personally, like, I'm still confused every day, and I think, so I, think sexual, <laughs> but I think sexuality is so fluid, like, you can always be changing how you feel. And it's also, like, this um, attachment to still holding on hope that maybe I'll like a guy or maybe, like, I could feel something with a guy. Yeah. And even, like, identifying on, like, the lesbian side was hard for me because I still hold on to that label of being bisexual because I've dated men and because I still know I can, like, make myself in a way like men. So it's like, yeah. do I like men because I like men or because mm. I've grown up thinking That's I should? Because, yeah, because they gave us that dream that you're supposed to find that prince charming and you're supposed to fall in love and have these kids and it's supposed to be like this thing. So in my life, I had this plan out like, mm. I'm gonna get married to a surfer guy. We're gonna have all these cute little kids and it's gonna be great. And I went on a date. It was my first date with a boy in high school. And I was like, he's gonna hold my hand at the movie theater. Oh my gosh, it's gonna happen. And he touched me and I did this. And my body knew yeah. before my head knew. Queer was not used that often, middle school, high school. The derogatory term was gay. That's gay, she's gay, that meant lame. So for me, I'm like, I'm not gay. I'm not, I don't think I'm lame. So fell under queer, gay, lesbian, as I got comfortable and deconstructed those labels myself. I think that family does play a huge role. Um, I was married to a man for six years. It was a little bit hard for me to actually like have the courage to come out mm -hmm. uh, because I do come from a very strict Latina household. I tried to force myself into, you know, being in a heterosexual relationship for the sake of my family and for the sake of the what if, what if it doesn't work out with a woman or me being scared and terrified. So I think that confusion is a very normal thing 
um, and everyone. I know. would say the most confusing element of things for me was literally the sexual aspect of my sexual orientation because I was in a relationship with a man for like seven years and I learned over time that like the dynamic that we had when we had sex was the dynamic that I wanted but I didn't want to be the me in it. Then I slowly started to identify as a butch. I remember someone saying this and I don't know who it was but somebody looked at me and said Butch women couldn't get a man, so they're trying to be one. It was like a double failure. My name is Rachel, and I'm on the lesbian side. Heteronormativity in the sense of a set of norms that disciplines people and subjugates them is certainly a problem, especially in the way that it impacts girls who are supposed to have a man, or as they say about butch women, try to be one. I don't, that's not to say that heterosexuality is a problem. It's not crazy for people to be heterosexual, just like it's not crazy that, that gay feeling and sexuality is also natural. In my experience, I've only been with men sexually and on dates, so I just haven't had that experience myself, but if I were to at any point have those experiences, with women, I wouldn't put a label in it. The reason why I disagreed about being conflicted, there's some things I don't ever explain to other people. This is one of them. I don't explain to you who I take home. I don't explain to you what I do in my room. I don't explain any of that. I like women, I've been on dates with women, I've done what I do with women and men, but I'm not going to, I label myself just so somebody else can put me in a category. I just always wanted to know this. Why is it so important that you are identified correctly? And the, the need to come out, yep. the need to say, I am this, I am that. Personally, I saw just the straight side of life. And I wasn't feeling the same way my friends were. And like when you get middle school, high school, college, I felt wrong. I was gonna disappoint my family. I was gonna be looked at my whole life as something less than. And I don't, if labels are not important to you, I think it's a personal thing. But for me, finding people that were saying like, this is why I feel this way. I'm like, I felt that way too. When you said, well, why is it such a big deal to come out of the closet? Like, but imagine being in a closet. It's dark, it's lonely. Like, mm. you don't have anyone to express your feelings to. Mm. And I also think representation is so important. Yes. yes. Like personally, yeah. I grew up with uh, a mom and a dad, then my parents split up, and now my mom is married to a woman. And they were actually the first black same-sex couple to be on the cover of Essence magazine. Wow. So I just wow. feel like, awesome. I know, right? Representation is so important. What if there were no labels? What, what would that look, look like? There would be no community. There would be no, I feel like if there were no labels, it's sad to say, but I feel like a lot of people would be in the closet, would mm. be in the dark. Hi, my name is Amy, and I am a lesbian. I did hide myself for a very long time just because I do come from a very strict household. I did endure, you know, actually being in that hetero relationship and actually experiencing it firsthand. It took me like a whole year of me basically ignoring him for me to finally realize like I can't be doing this, like this is not who I am, this is not what I want for the rest of my life. I believe traditional gender roles are important. Oh, wait. They're important to a degree. You know, if a man were to date a woman and they were to get married, you would expect the man to um, provide and the woman to, well, stay home or, or work and just raise the children. If we didn't have those gender norms, then, the well, how would, how would the world work? The reason I said that I agree is because okay. the word role is, the, is that word for a reason. A role is a performance. So it's... It's not, we don't need to naturalize it. We don't need to say women are this one and men are this one or whatever your body is means your destiny is this. I just think that the, as social performances and ways of organizing our lives, we're not ever gonna really get rid of the masculine feminine thing. So I think acknowledging it so that we can think critically about it is what matters. I believe we're in a space where we're starting to like tear down things that we're not entirely understanding or appreciating why it was built. We have to appreciate that we have to have some type of structure. Now, does that structure mean that because I'm born with a certain genitalia, this is the role I'm destined to be in? I don't know. It depends on which society you belong to. I don't want to do everything. 
I don't. That's why gender roles are important too. You're designating, this is what you do, this is what I do. I think that's okay. I am Marsha and I am straight. I think a lot of the decisions that we make come from pre-programming. For one, I'm Jamaican born. In Jamaica, being homosexual is a no, we don't do that. There was only one way, you were straight, that was it. So part of my decision is definitely my upbringing, but it's also from my experiences and realizing this is my fit. This works better for me. Me and my girlfriend, we don't perform gender roles at all. Like we care for each other equally and it's definitely a bit different, I think. Do y'all live together? Uh, no. That makes a difference. Yeah. But we, for the past three weeks, we've been living together, though, so. That may shift the longer you live together. Yeah. I mean, I don't see how, why um, like certain resp household responsibilities should be defined by gender, mm -hmm. especially because like I grew up with two moms, mm -hmm. so I never was like, oh, like this is like my mom and my dad. Like this is my mom and my mom, and both my parents work. They like threw my ass in daycare, and it was just like in a way. I guess I had two dads, <laughs> if you want to like put it in that way. <laughs> but like, I think it's like about a balance of like sharing responsibility, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, but does saying that the gender roles are important mean that we're saying that they should be employed? Because I'm not saying that they should be forced on anybody. Yeah. It's just whether and how much you want to like take it on. They should I, not be forced on I'm everybody. When you were talking about uh, doing the dishes and whatnot, my ex-husband was the person who stayed at home. I was the one who was at work. He was the one that was doing the dishes and cooking. The world would be a better place without men. Well, I was just like thinking historically, like men have been the one that have caused wars and created a place where women didn't have the same respect or capacity to be heard and seen. I think it'd be easier in a sense for me personally. I think a lot of the times men don't understand that I could be a woman that doesn't want to end up with a man, that they want to like change me, or a man and a woman is like the only right way. Hi, my name is Jamie, and I am on the lesbian side. I think it just comes down to that I know I'm capable of being with men, and I find them attractive, and like I could see myself being with them sexually, but like romantically, I don't think I could ever really connect to a man. with men's power, so to speak, it gets like almost too extreme. Like, you know, look what's happening today with the old white men trying to control abortion or women's bodies. But um, today, I think we would still need them in the world just to have at least a different perspective. Yep. I mean, I really struggled with this question because looking back, the only person in my life who's ever hit me was a femme lesbian. I have had experiences with um, kind of unwanted sexual advances and things with men and all of that's been bad too but like my very worst trauma that has just stuck with me was a woman. I don't think it'd be better without men but I do think men need to be a little more educated on things. Even how we're treated in school by boys like growing up was always... Mm -hmm. If they hurt you they like you. If they yeah, yank on your no. pigtails. So I don't think we should like abolish all men but I do think um, there needs to be some leveling out. I think that definitely we're getting there. I feel like because of what men have done in the past, you know, in our history, um, I feel like that's why they have this superiority again uh, over all of the women. Um, but I do think that we are here because of what we've gone through. <laughs>